Good afternoon, everyone. I'm John Pleasance, and I head up EA's publishing and online organizations. Prior to joining EA just a few months ago, I worked for the past 12 years building various interactive companies, such as Ticketmaster, Match.com, and City Search. Now, that's not direct game experience, but it is a lot of media, entertainment, and interactivity. Each of those companies was an early leader in leveraging technology to deliver really cool and new user experiences that ultimately fueled unprecedented category growth. So what does all this have to do with games? Well, I think quite a bit, but I'll mention just two things off the bat. First, faster and more continuous product development, and secondly, easier and more connected user experiences as we've heard all afternoon long. I submit that in games we have these exact opportunities and even more. Yes, we need to make our games more intuitive and more connected, but we also need to give gamers, both core gamers and casual gamers, more control of their games. We can open source our platforms and we can give users more of what they want when they want it. Collectively at EA all day, you will hear how important we think this is and we are committed to it for the future, both as a company and I would submit for the industry. But that's enough words on these kinds of concepts. I want to introduce a few of my colleagues who today are at the coalface leading key initiatives driving this type of connected consumer experience. Two people who EA developers are spending increasing amounts of very important time with. The first, Mr. Naya Reeves. Thanks, John. Hi, I'm Nanea Reeves, and I run the EA Online Group. So, you know, I've been known to completely geek out when I talk about EA's online technologies, but it really just boils down to a few simple things. We're trying to incorporate online features to make our games easier to use and ultimately much more fun to play. So let me tell you about a couple ways that we're doing this. We've just rolled out a very cool new identity system. It's called Nucleus. A nucleus is essentially your gamer profile. It's your likes, your dislikes, your friends and achievements. A nucleus carries your identity with you everywhere you go, across different games and even across different platforms. So what this means is that the reputation that you built in your console game, it'll be there when you hit our websites, when you play on your PC, your handheld, and even when you play on your mobile phone. So in addition to storing your scores and accomplishments, Nucleus helps you find your friends and a perfect match. So we've also just built some very powerful back-end tools that will make microtransactions a bigger part of your game experience. In Battlefield Heroes, which is free to play, you'll be able to get new weapons and maps and even a cooler outfit so you look hot while you're mowing down the enemy. <laughs> and in the new Sims 2 store that we just launched, you can get that ghetto blaster that your Sim needs to throw a wicked party. So we've already built Nucleus into all of the EA Sports titles, Spore, and Battlefield Heroes, and Nucleus is now live in over 30 countries in the new EA store. By the end of 2009, we expect to have Nucleus integrated into more than 25 EA titles. And finally, we're starting to add some very innovative community features to our arsenal. And so I'd like to introduce you to the newest member of the EA Online Group, He's going to come out and tell you about Rupture, my new partner in crime, Sean Fanning. Thanks, Nanea. It's great to have the opportunity to share a bit about what we're doing at Rupture. We've been hard at work building a system to allow users to track and challenge their friends across all games and gaming platforms. And together with some of the cool EA Online initiatives you learned about earlier, we'll provide access to a lot of the features you might expect and some new ones that you haven't seen before. Now, as you can see here, Rupture users can subscribe to their friends and track what games they've been playing and then what they've been doing in each of those games. Now, we really believe many of the things we're developing to be completely innovative and new in the online gaming space. But since we only have time to show one today, I'd like to show you all something that we call social achievements. Now, an achievement today is simply a set of conditions chosen by the game designer to challenge the gamer. Now, as gamers, we really wanted a way to create our own challenges or achievements with our own set of requirements. So in this basic example, my friend is going to challenge me to complete one of the achievements that he just unlocked. And then all of our mutual friends are notified of the challenge and have a chance to comment or talk trash. And the results of each challenge are automatically tracked and published by Rupture. And this is just the most basic version uh, of a challenge. We also support entirely custom achievements. So 
Users can set their own requirements to be as simple or as complex as they want. For example, I could create a custom challenge for my friend to unlock all bad company achievements and level his Warhammer character to 30 by this weekend. And this is only the beginning. But most importantly, everything we're building at Rupture follows one very specific theme. Rupture is built around an entirely open and game agnostic API. So this means any developer or any gamer with a little scripting knowledge can extend Rupture to support new games, new game events, or stats. Gamers can also freely export any of their game data in a variety of formats or to a variety of different services. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick peek into what we're building. If any of you are interested in learning more, you can go to rupture.com developers for more information on our API and release schedule. Thanks.